if the council supports this plan to change, it will go against um, the county council's vision and purpose and guidelines set by the county plan. As our representatives, I ask you to consider if this will benefit the community as a whole. Many hours were spent and much community input was invested developing the county plan. This plan was established to, the, to be a framework and protective mechanism to ensure a high quality of life for the community. Many of us in the community assume the plan is not easily modified or changed. I remind you that some of the plan's goals and policies include preserve the rural character of Wasatch County, preserve the green belt between Heber City and Midway, prohibit structures within 100 feet of active stream or in a designated beam floodway unless the foundation is constructed at least one foot above the 100-year flood level, discourage the development of sensitive lands such as wetlands, landslides, and stream corridors. Um, preserve low density, land use slash zoning and geographical or ecologically sensitive areas and to discourage modifications that would permit greater density. Protect, protect, protect the rural agriculture economy of the county by establishing agricultural operations as a priority use of land, protect existing future agricultural operations and encourage farmers and ranchers to stay on the land. If the council supports this rezoning and plan change, you'll be moving against everything this plan was put in place to protect. I have included excerpts from the county plan which need to be considered. The central planning area is highly prized by many local residents of the Hebrew Valley as open space. This area's scenic values contribute significantly, significantly to the real value of all land within the Hebrew area. The physical constraints of the central planning area themselves will likely ensure that the historical land use pattern for this planning area will be largely maintained. Therefore, as a matter of public policy, the central planning area is to be maintained in its historical land use pattern of open meadows and river and small stream riparian habitat. The use of this area for housing and other types of development is discouraged due to the physical constraints and the higher cost of providing governmental services. Land within the central planning area has been identified as having a public benefit as open space in this area while development may occur at the underlying zone of one unit per 20 acres. In no way does this rezone and plan amendment protect the agricultural fields of Heber or improve the quality of life for other area landowners. I ask you please to take this into consideration, the best use of the land, and other community members desire to protect the fields of Hero Valley. Sincerely, Justin Creel. I have one more for you, my neighbor. Um, he sent you an email as well, but it's a little shorter. I'm going to read it. Um, it's uh, Bruce Mack, Bruce and Christine Mack. Honorable council members, we write to oppose the request. The general plan was developed over a long period of many well-informed citizens with important goals to be achieved by it. If the plan is to is to achieve its good purposes and to meet anything, it should be changed only sparingly and based on changed circumstances for important reasons. As the planning commission meeting, at the planning commission meeting, no such showing was made or even attempted. The probe's request is understandable because it is helpful to them, but that is not the test. We certainly do not blame them for making the request and we wish them well in using their property in accordance with the existing general plan. Thank you for considering our point of view, Bruce and Christine Mack. And then my two cents, um, I guess it was probably late 2016, I was at a city council meeting that Mr. Probst had a, a very best of interest there. I don't know if it's still where it stands, but to build a community of fourplexes and a senior center. And he was very, Bravo to him, you know, he was, he said everything I think the community wanted, and I think it's just an example of if you set, if you set him to protect his property, that's, it's going to just have an avalanche effect. You know, it'll be, what about, maybe there's a rich guy with a big ranch with a lot of money, and if you let him do it, maybe he's going to, you know, hire a lawyer, you know. Just think about the community as a whole, and I think even in that development, his, you know, his, to have a driveway in your front yard of your beautiful 40 acres with your horses and your kids, that was a poor decision. I don't know where that went, just that was me sitting in the meeting. So, thank you for your time.
Hello, my name is um, Annie McMullen, senior for B4. Um, I just have a few comments. The first comment is, uh, and you all know, and you've been reminded of it, the overwhelmingly, overwhelming defeat of the decision made by you guys to try and upzone the Northfields. Center, you know all about it. I don't need to remind you, but. Um, that was a pretty bold statement by a lot of people in the community saying that open space, larger parcels are really important to them. Um, I think as far as the central and southern boundaries, there was a lot of thoughtful process that went into how, to, how they said that. And I think that probably, as was stated before, some of those boundaries were set because of property, bigger parcels. Um, I think if you start picking off prop parcels just because of a petitioner wanting to have the opportunity to upzone um, A20 to RA5, you're going to open a can of worms that you'll never be able to stop because the guy's neighbor is going to come to you and go, well, you did it for him. Look at my, my boundary, my property. It could work for me as well. Um, I think that you'll just see that steamroller, and I think that um, at some point you're going to have to say no to somebody, and then you'll see a lawsuit. Um, I think if it benefited a lot of people in the community as a whole, it makes sense. I think that this request is benefiting one person. Um, the 20 acres, they know what they have. It's not a one, it's one house on 20, not an entitlement to come and get a rezone for RA5. Um, and I found it interesting, Doug Smith said that the Planning Commission had some concerns about the possibility of continuing RA5 expansion. In my opinion, that's not a possibility. That's a certainty that you'll see where there's huge development pressure on our county. Um, and I, and I also don't really agree that 650 is a natural boundary. It's just a little country road there. It's not anything that's really major that um, is significant in my mind. And also, I'm a little bit familiar with land just to the west and slightly north to that, and it's the Giles 17-acre farm. Very, very wet ground. I don't know how much farther to the east this parcel is, but there was an awful lot of moving of dirt to be able to dry that farm out enough to, to build those buildings. Um, and then if you guys do decide to rezone, move the boundary, rezone R8 by 20.5 acres, I guess you get three lots out of that because the infrastructure that would have to be taken out of the, out of the net balance would not be four, it would be three and something. So something to keep in mind um, and I'd hate to see you make any kind of um, exception to the rule on that one too so thanks for your time you guys have a hard job I do want to acknowledge that I know you're doing the best you can but please take into consideration the whole community and not just one person thanks Amelia thank you thank you Hi, my name is Holly Bodily. A um, couple quick questions that I in looking at this map and and, uh, and whatnot. Um, first of all, like it's been mentioned, once you allow one property to go, how many others and how many others and how many others, and it will snowball. We've seen it happen already. I'm curious, though, I was going to mention, do we know an, an estimate of how much acreage could be impacted by this that could possibly, I know right now they're proposing taking, it's on a different map, taking the little park to the north of there as well and moving that in. Um, I think the park to the north goes out, correct, Doug? Yes. So some goes into the central and some would come out. Okay. This but would go in. What you is the net you difference? The zone, yeah. You mentioned that the zoning wouldn't change in some of those. So I'm just wondering, how can you redraw a boundary line and not actually change the zoning? 
because at some point they're going to come in and say, hey, we should be, but, you know. That is only overlaps both of those planning areas. Okay. What's the net difference, Doug? That, that I don't know. I, okay. I wonder if what she's asking is if that boundary was put up to 650 South, how much more acreage would, would be possible to zone? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. And then you have to take into consideration for each of those, you know, every time you increase density, it's a, it is a huge impact on the city as a whole, on the county as a whole for every city, not just uh, the county, but, you know, everybody's paying taxes and every time we increase density, you, you do have an impact on, on the schools, um, the infrastructure, the roads, the, you know, whatever it takes to maintain the city. And it's a proven fact that um, open space and not having all this developed actually saves a city or a county money. And I, I've seen the figure, it's about $7 um, for every dollar of, of uh, residential. So just keep that in mind as well, that every time we're down zoning and increasing density, it's impacting everybody in the community at large. And so um, I think that this, the election spoke loudly the they mentioned the 74 percent a year ago on the the north of the field rezoning the community at large does not want to see this happen and we'd love to see you guys reflect that in your decision thank you tracy taylor um i was here since four o'clock so some of you missed Ryan Stark's presentation for economic and tourism. And I think we need to all step back and take a look at the big picture here because a lot of things are kind of coming at us all at once. Um, it's not about 120 acre piece. It, this is a much bigger issue than that. But Ryan Stark's from the economic and tourism gave everybody this pamphlet, not everybody, but it'll be, it'll be up on a website shortly. But they're trying to attract businesses to come to Wasatch County. We want businesses to come to Wasatch County. We want a diverse type of businesses to come to Wasatch County. One of the first things he brought up to, to encourage businesses to move here is the quality of life. Ryan Starks this afternoon said open space is directly affecting our quality of life. That's why some of these businesses moved out of Salt Lake and are so happy to be up in Wasatch County. But in his presentation here, the top 10 goals and strategies for Wasatch County tourism and economic. Number one goal for quality of life is to create a Wasatch Open Land Board, which you guys just did, and identifies ways to preserve critical open space. So we've got the Economic Development Board telling you this is important to us. This is important for businesses to come to us. You just started an Open Lands Board, which I am happy to be on and look forward to accomplishing many things. So on the one hand, you have an open lands board you just started, and on the other hand, you're thinking about rezoning an A20 to an RA5. As a real estate broker in this town, I would like people to think about it in a way that you would be pricing us out of accomplishing some of the directives of the open lands board that you just started. Because you will now have quadrupled the value of that 20 acres. And that will affect, as a few other people have said just now, don't count on this one 20-acre piece to be the end of this discussion. This is going to open up a can of worms, and it's going to change our directive for the Open Lands Board. That's a big concern to me. Um, at the Planning Commission meeting, I said, you know, we have a... We have a, a vision statement up there that you guys thought about for a year that talks about the rural heritage, that the open space, the quality of our air and water and all these things that are awesome. The general plan says the same thing. It says we need to preserve our agricultural lands. That's in the general plan. You have a guideline of how to move forward for the next 50 years. Either we don't follow our general plan and we allow this to happen, 
or then we need to go change our general plan and our vision statement because they don't coincide with what you have as your general plan. You can't have both. Um, and my last comment is, I said, you know, what do we want this valley to look like in 20, 30, 50 years? Understand that our quality of life is not going to change like that. Our rural preservation is not going to change like that. Our general plan is going to get nipped at little by little by little by little. It's going to happen over short spurts like this. It's going to be one piece here and another piece there. And that's how we're going to lose our vision statement and our general plan. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Trudy Simmons. We um, moved here, well, we purchased property in the Northfields about five years ago. Uh, just over five years ago, purchased an existing home, didn't build. Um, and I just want to say that I, I appreciate everything that's been said so far, especially the comments about this opening a can of worms. Um, I agree 100% that this is not one parcel of land. This is, this is a dangerous juncture for this valley. And the quality of life here is critically dependent on the decisions that are being made right now because what has happened with the Northfields a couple of years ago and now this, it's just going to be a, someone said, slippery slope and that's exactly what it is. Um, I think all you have to do <laughs> is drive down to Salt Lake Valley or Utah County and look at the air. And when you're driving over that hill from Park City and you see that toxic cloud over Salt Lake and you drive down to the Provo Orem area and you see that toxic cloud and when we're up here you see it creeping up. Mm -hmm. You can see that haze creeping up into this valley and so if a 20 acre parcel is zoned to, to be allowed, I guess that would be into five parcels potentially, you've got five times as many cars, you've got five times as many people, you've got five times as much traffic, You've got five times as much congestion on the road. You've got five times as much um, more children waiting to go to the schools. And um, it's just going to, it's not going to stop. It's going to start a roller coaster that's not going to stop. And pretty soon, Keeper's going to look just like Orem. And I'm sorry. I lived down there for a long time. And I love Orem. I love the people. But it's a pretty ugly place. I mean, already we've got, you know, just in the last little while, we've got Burger King and Arby's and Carl's <laughs> Jr. and Panda Express, and, you know, it's going to lose its character. Keeper is going to lose its character if this uh, development is allowed to go unbridled. Um, look at the north or the southeast area, all those people and cars and um, homes being built there. And if we just let that continue throughout the whole valley, then what we love is going to be gone. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any further comment? Public <coughs> comment on this side. Uh, Riley Probst, applicant. Um, can you go back to page seven? Yeah, you're right No. Where am I? Yeah. Yeah. You want the pointer? Sure. You need the pointer? So the, the, the question was brought up with what are you gaining and what are we losing? So if you're on the new boundary here, this is going to be put in the central. This is the 20 acre piece. In the southern, you're going to have my 20 acre piece. This is the Fishlers. Uh, this is a house on 10 acres. This is part of the Webbs, which is back here, I believe, uh, Dennis Webb. And here is the um, Roberts. And there's already three houses down here that are on, I don't know the parcels, but part of the planning commission, what they had stated is it kind of already fits with, with this area anyway for the five acre zoning with the existing houses and stuff. So I'm just guessing, say this is 20, 40, 60, 80, you're, you're gaining 60 acres. So increasing the density by 10 homes, not even that, if, if they ever did that. And just for the public that wasn't here the last time, the whole purpose of the general plan was for the council and the county to protect 
this deal in the future. I would never come here to do the general plan amendment, but it was something that the Council and Planning Commission recommended so they could protect the difference between central and southern so we didn't have that future growth. Um, do you guys have any questions for me? Questions for Mr. Brooks? Will you refer, and I can't remember totally, that, that part of the deal of what you're doing is because of land that you're going to be asked to dedicate to the future bypass. Will you, will you speak to that? Well, yeah, and that kind of changed. <laughs> Maybe that's changed. That kind of changed last week, too. Um, so originally when we were here, Heber City owned 84 feet right here, and they, and they still do. Um, in the last, I guess, two years, um, Heber City has approved this development for, um, it's kind of a overlay zone. It's, I think it's five units to the acre, maybe even more of that. But it's essentially townhomes and assisted living. When they approved this, the city, the city gained, in the meantime, Udall had come back and said they needed 105 feet instead of 84 feet. So right here, this development give up the additional 14 or 16 feet that they needed, but they wouldn't give it up on the back end. So now the future bypass road comes and approaches my property. And now just of last week, um, according to the planning commission, or not commission, but the planning department and UDOT, now the bypass needs to be 120 feet. And so there have been conversation about they even may take more of my property along here to accommodate the bypass. And so that's kind of why I'm here. If they end up taking, you know, say two or three acres, or maybe even one, two, whatever it may be of my existing piece, and it's zoned RA5, well, I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do and get the four, the four homes that I possibly could have done with them taking that. So that's why I'm trying to get this done just for the future with this bypass. I, I, I probably don't want to be here with the bypass if that ever happens. I would be looking at it every day. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Probst? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Would you like to you want to make come up and make a comment? Sure. <coughs> I guess that's the purpose of being a liaison. And I love it. And this step we're in a public hearing so we'd love to have you come on that's up. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. This step doesn't make your name for Ronald Crittenden. Can you spell it for you? <laughs> I can't even spell that. <laughs> you know, this does affect those two developments along there, and, and the one on the north side of 650 moved their line over a little, kind of reformatted the housing areas, and then the one on the south that had assisted living and a care center and whatever, they reconfigured some of the open space and that up on the north end, just like he says, but, you know, they have some vested rights in that subdivision, it really creates a problem. But if, if and when, or if this needs to shift wider, it's probably going to have to come out of county side. You know, it's shifting over into county on the way, just so you're aware of that. And That's what he just explained. It, just as he explained, but I wanted to call it to your attention. If it goes anywhere now, it's got to go county-wide, out into the county. And so it becomes your issue for that road, I guess, the way that provides it's where it is in there. And their entity, but you might consider that maybe in exchange for some things, there could be some easements given. We've started to look at that as councilmen that whenever you up zone, annex, those kind of things uh, give a real value to the people that own the property. I mean, just as, as Tracy said, it goes from one house to four, and the, the land value shoots right up. So you might want to look at, since it's going to become your problem maybe, that, you know, we, whoever develops the road, but maybe there could be some easement given in consideration for that four houses or something. Just, just a thought. That's why, that's why I asked Gravy to speak to that, because I knew that was there, that issue. Any further public comment? Seeing I'm, I, I'm sorry, I just have a question. Should I get up there to ask my question? Please or? state your name for the record so we can hear her and okay. it. Okay. It will be on the recording, so we've got it. Yeah. It's Heather Whitney again. And I'm wondering, so this, um, the property that Mr. Popes was talking about that's next to the easement, is that the property that he developed? And, okay. 
So how did that easement come into being right there, or what concession was that? I'm that uh, that's the bypass road, and we've been collecting that easement for the last five years. That and easement was given as a concession of annex and that into Heber City, correct? Yes. Okay. And and did Mr. Whose land was that that got yes. annexed into Heber? Mr. Giles owned it originally. Mm -hmm. So how does the easement end up affecting Mr. Probst's land right there? Well, when they've given 84 feet and UDOT's now saying we need 120, where are you going to go? Into an already developed subdivision? There's no space there. And well, you've got to push it to the west is what's been talked about as a possibility. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to understand that dynamic <coughs> there. I still think it, it is a slippery slope, but the, we still have the same issue. But I wasn't sure what it was. That's part of the reason for this request, as was explained. Mm -hmm. Right, but I wasn't sure whether that was his land originally that he gave an easement for. Mm -mm. So. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further public comment? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Sybil Bogardis, and I'm actually here for a different reason, but I used to be on the Summit County Planning Commission, and so quite a bit of interaction with the county council there. Um, and, and I just want to, I, I want to echo what I've heard here in terms of concern about the future. When you make an exception, you're actually going to cut off your power. And I saw it in Summit County. I saw it with the Planning Commission and also with the Summit County Council. We sat through numerous meetings where the county attorney, Jamie, had to repeatedly say, we don't have the ab ability to maintain our general plan any longer because we have allowed exceptions. We have set precedents, we've allowed exceptions for this, we've allowed exceptions for that. And they were unable to hold firm. They were unable to keep their general plan in place and the bits and pieces and the bites are real. It's a real issue, it's a real concern. And I don't know how many of you all like Kimball Junction, but you're gonna end up with Kimball Junction all around the bypass if you're not careful. It's gonna be horrible. And you'll lose, you'll lose the green space and you'll lose each one of those because you're setting a precedent if you approve this. Thank you. Thank you.